Is it good advice to the notice of the time date patient and the intent known agenda of such a meeting? Uh, the time is posted in a public place to the such as the announcement on November 16, 2023, and transmit the time of back in the rest of the claims growing news on November 16, 2023, and filed with the township clerk on November 16, 2023. Did you go to Mr. Patel. Yes, speak up. Please speak. Patel. Patel. Yes. Mr. Levero. Yes. Mr. Schichtel. Yes. Mr. Pankov. Yes. Mr. Bag. Yes. Ms. Bari. Yes. Ms. Applegate. Yes. Councilwoman Jeevers. Yes. Mayor Marate. Yes. Vice Chairman. Hoberman? Here. And Chairman Clark? Here. Um, was it wasn't a vote. We have, we, have, we have a quorum. Thank you. Um, okay. Public comments. So open the floor to public comments. Please step up to the microphone, state your name, and address for the record. And this will be on non agenda. Please, non, non agenda, non pending items. Please step up. Okay, seeing none, one. Uh, first order of business is ordinance 2023 23 trust fund development fee collection procedure. Jerry, would you like to just give a quick overview? Or San Or San Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can do it. Yes. It's just an amendment to the existing ordinance on how we collect. Um, in this case, it would be affordable housing trust fund monies. Typically, 50% is due at the issuance of the building permit and the final 50% at the issuance of the first CO. We're just changing it um, from a building permit to a zoning permit. So the fee, the first 50% we do at the issuance of the zoning permit. Okay. Um, okay. Um, um, isn't uh, we have an opportunity to question? Sure. Uh, Sam, you also in this uh, ordinance you've changed the um, person responsible for tracking it. Correct. If it's a building permit, the construction official tracks it. If it's a zoning permit, the zoning officer tracks it. So we're changing on who's responsible for the collection mechanism. Um, as a procedural matter, I've always collected it and, and done it, but it's easier if I can collect it at the zoning permit rather than the construction permit. Right. Okay, that's why it was the other question was why was the change implemented? So this comports with affordable housing rules? Correct. Oh, right. Thank you. Sam, when is the uh, um, zoning permit issued, chronologically speaking? The zoning permit would be issued once um, the applicant has shown compliance with all the outstanding condition and any planning board resolution, uh, entering into development council, um, revising their plans, posting performance guarantees. Um, and then Fran and I, the township engineer, and I would sign off on the site plan or the subdivision plan. And then the applicant would submit actual construction drawings to my office. I would review it to make sure it's in compliance. And then I would collect the affordable housing fee now. And then I would sign off on that and submit it to the construction department so the building plans could be re reviewed by them. And then um, I have one more question. Um, you say in one of the... Um, uh, um, the, the, the um, whatever the, the, the resolutions uh, that uh, it, there would be a um, burden on the developer if it wasn't in, in this manner, then what, what's the burden on the developer? Well, they wouldn't get their zoning permit, which means that's a prior approval. They couldn't apply to the construction department. But if they had paid the first 50% and they were applying for a CO, we just wouldn't issue the CO until they made final payment. Thank you. 
seven years, years for opening your eyes. So you are the first star, right? Any permit application, unless you sign off, permit the permit. I mean, that's the that's, permit, that's okay. correct. I'm a prior approval. So the construction department will not accept any construction permits until I sign off. And that lets them know that all prior approvals, planning board or zoning board resolutions have been complied with. And then the construction department can start their 20 day uh, review of their building permit application. Anybody else comment? I want to take a motion um, to uh, approve uh, 2023 23. So moved. Second. Uh, people roll. Uh, those uh, those for the door. We have a hospital. Yes. Mr. Chattel? Yes. yes. Mr. Pancove? Yes. Mr. Begg? Yes. Ms. Bobby? Yes. Ms. Applegate? Yes. Councilwoman Jeevers? Yes. Mayor Maratai? Yes. Vice Chairman Hoberman? Yes. Chairman Kerr? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Next order of business is to. Um, Ordinance 2023 24 off track street improvements development fee collection procedure. 10% uh, would be due at the issuance under this new ordinance at the zoning permit, and the remainder 90% will be issued uh, prior to the issuance of the first certificate of occupancy. Thank you. Um, any questions, discussion? Hearing none, I'll entertain the motion to. Uh, Approved 2024. So moved. Second. Moved by Alan, second by Simon. Please pull the roll. Mr. Schichtel? Yes. Mr. Pancake? Yes. Ms. Applegate? Yes. Councilwoman Jeevers? Yes. Mayor Marate? Yes. Vice Chairman Hoberman? Yes. Chairman Carr? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Next order of business uh, application PD 22 08, West Windsor Police Regional School District Review of Long Range Facilities Plan. Can you step up the microphone? Good afternoon. My, or, good evening. My name is Brandon Croker. I'm an attorney at the Comegno Law Group here on behalf of the West Windsor Plains Regional School District Board of Education. With me tonight, I have Dr. David Adderhold, Superintendent of Schools, George Duthie, uh, Board Architect, and also Steve Schreier, Board Architect, uh, from FBHD uh, Architects and Planners. Would you like me to, um, I guess, swear the witnesses in or uh, um, ask the architects about their qualifications? Yeah, we'll, have a, we'll swear them all in at the same time to say. Yeah. Sure. Stand if you could stand right hand. All right. You swear or affirm that testimony you're about to give will be the truth. So it's one or affirm. Please state your full he'll go around each please state your full name and spell your last name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And just preliminarily, also, uh, Jim and the Architects, uh, I'll ask both uh, George and Steve, are your license is current right, in, the, in the state of New Jersey? All right. Yes. Uh, have you testified before planning boards before? Yes. Yes. Okay. You've been accepted as an expert? Yes. Okay. Intention accepted. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, we're here tonight to request a courtesy review of the board's long range facilities plan uh, pursuant to the municipal land use law under NJSA 40 colon 55D-31 and specifically concerning the potential acquisition of uh, property. Uh, uh, 221 and 223 Southfield Road, uh, block 20.07, uh, lots 12 and 15. I know the board is presently under contract to purchase both properties and we are awaiting DOE approval. Now we're here tonight only concerning 
the potential acquisition. Once the, the specific development plans are developed, we'll be back before the board and we'll be happy to hear, uh, have the board review and, and give the board the opportunity to make recommendations. Lot 12, it's our understanding is in R-1 uh, C zone and lot 15 is R-20. And it's our understanding both zones uh, recognize schools as a permitted conditional use. And we've seen the planner's review letter dated uh, November 15th, and it noted that the acquisition appears to be consistent with the master plan. So I'll ask, uh, maybe I'll start by asking Dr. Adderhold, maybe to come up and just speak generally about the board's interest in the property and the reason for the acquisition. Oh, good evening, everyone. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here this evening uh, to Mayor Marate, to Councilwoman Jeevers, to Chairman Carp, and members of the Planning Board and professional staff. Thank you for taking the time this evening. Um, I've had the pleasure of representing the Board of Education this evening, and I've had the great pleasure of representing the school district over the past 15 years. Um, during that time, we've put expansions on eight of the 10 schools, um, four, four during that time in West Windsor. So I've had the opportunity to appear before you before. Um, so tonight we're here for the long range to review or the courtesy review of the long range facilities plan, which is, uh, a, is a component of, of code when we're, uh, making some changes and which, um, need to be reviewed in conjunction with your master plan. Um, we have submitted, uh, the acquisition to the department of education, um, which requires us to do a minor amendment for the long range facilities plan. So when you acquire property, it's a minor amendment. When you build on the property you acquired, it's a major amendment. So it's a minor amendment that's been submitted and has been acknowledged by the Department of Education um, as, as in conjunction with the review of the long range facilities plan. A uh, specific within that, obviously, as Brandon just mentioned, is the acquisition of 221 and, and 223 Southfield. Um, this is known as the Prine Farm. You may also know it as the Hollyfield uh, property uh, with the sign out in front as you're going up Southfield Road past the McCaffrey's on the left before you cross into Plainsboro um, from a visual standpoint. Um, that property is in totality over 28 acres. Uh, to give you context of size related to other school properties, Dutch Neck and Wyckoff are 14 acres each. Right? So it's equivalent to two of our current elementary schools. Uh, I'm pleased to report that um, at the October 17th board meeting, the Board of Education unanimously approved the acquisition of land um, and entered into an official contract with the Prine and Hibbs families. Um, this is a property that we have uh, um, had a desire for for quite some time. Um, before um, Mrs. Prine had passed, we had been in con con contact with her um, through her through her family. Then, of course, with the pandemic, things slowed down. Um, and then um, it re re came back to light about a little over a year ago. Um, and it was a year of back and forth in negotiations and working with the families. Um, as we do a DOE submission, there's at least 17 different components that are required, including phase one, phase two environmentals and uh, surveys and whatnot. All that work was submitted for us to submit to the Department of Education for their review. It's Buying land for a school district is almost like reverse attorney review. Everything's agreed to on the front end, and then you submit it to the department for them to review and check the boxes to make sure you've done everything in compliance with the acquisition. So we're in that review, and by code, it's a 90-day review period, and the Department of Ed grants themselves an automatic 60-day extension. So it could take 150 days. Um, <laughs> so it's a nice little provision they built for themselves. So somewhere in early 2024, we should hear back from the department as a component of their review. They also submit to the DEP to ensure that the DEP, and we've already done um, work with our environmental consultants to ensure that we're, we won't have a problem when we get to the DEP, but the DEP still does a review as a component of their checklist. As you very much know, there's a tremendous amount of movement happening within our community as a result of residential growth. Majority of the residential growth as it impacts the district is on the West Windsor side of town currently. Um, 
working with both uh, the professional staff and, and uh, uh, mayor and, and Sam has been phenomenal in my 15 years here in district as a partner in helping us identify properties. We have had our eye on properties many a times. We've been in negotiations with three other properties that fell through or that we removed ourselves because it didn't comply with environmental or, or we found that it was on a state recreation list and the owners weren't aware. Or, so if there's been things over time that we've pulled back on. This particular property is um, ideal in being in a nice center part of the district with respect to being near the border of both Plainsboro and West Windsor. Um, and it also, you have 60% of the children are from West Windsor. So right now, West Windsor students don't fit in West Windsor schools. And as we're surging at our elementary schools, especially in certain grade levels, Dutch Neck's at 111% capacity currently. Um, we are definitely at a point where we have properties coming on board that are going to send to Hawk Village, uh, Grover, and um, and uh, and South. Um, we've put expansions on Grover and South. We put an expansion on Hawk. We have not put an expansion on Dutch Neck. And quite honestly, fourteen acre property. It's been built on multiple times. There's not a lot of room at Dutch Neck without further infringement towards property owners and towards. And it's it's not something that we're considering, but it's it's an obstacle that we have to overcome. Um, and we can build more at Hawk, but to, the same exact problem comes in place. To what end? How big do you build a Hawk without acquiring something else where it doesn't feel like an elementary school? It already can fit over 900 students. Building out to a 1,200 student K-3 elementary school doesn't sound reasonable, practical, or it would take out fields and playgrounds. So we really do have some challenges in front of us. So as a result also of... The amount of actions that's come forward with um, affordable housing and the, the number of developments that our store property owners that are sort of holding with the hopes of being considered in round two of the 2025 affordable housing. There has not been a lot of property owners of this kind of size willing to sell to a school. And if they are willing, the prices are astronomical. One property owner out on 571 wanted a million an acre. <laughs> <laughs> This is coming in at about just over 140,000 an acre. Um, so it's for 28 acres. And this is being purchased out of capital reserve dollars. So there'll be no bonding and there'll be no additional tax burden to the taxpayers for the acquisition of land. Building a school is a whole different conversation. That requires us coming back in front of you. That requires us going to the, the township voters for a bond. As I mentioned that we had we purchased this property, um, but I thought maybe we'd pause and give George an opportunity or we're purchasing the property with the expectation of building what will most likely be an elementary school. What the size and scope of that is and the configuration of grades, all too premature to even, but we do believe it will be at the elementary level. That could potentially change, but I think we're talking about some form of configuration within our district of an elementary grade level uh, facility. I want to give George the opportunity to talk to you briefly just about high level, what is a long range facilities plan uh, and what's the intention of it from a department of ed standpoint. Um, so George, do you mind? Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see everyone again. Uh, it's been a little while since I've been here. Uh, as uh, Dr. Adhold was saying, uh, the long range facility plan is a requirement of the, uh, of the law it's administered by the Department of Education. And what is it really? It's, it's a requirement that requires a school district to report in uh, every five years or when they do a major construction project that affects capacity or enrollments or move students around, okay? So that's really the conditions under which you have to do a major amendment to the Long Range Facility Plan. So West Windsor did theirs in 2021 when they uh, were required to update for some major projects that they did and they received their approvals, okay? So they do not have to do another major amendment to the long range facility plan until 2026 or which is unlikely, they do a major project that will affect the reconfiguration of the school um, um, or the enrollments, okay? Now, sometimes there will be a technical aspect where we will have to, because um, we, we did a, uh, a shift in with some renovations, but they do require us to make that amendment to the plan, okay, as a major amendment. So uh, those are the conditions. The acquisition of the property by West Windsor Plainsboro is a 
minor amendment to the long range facility plan because nothing's been built on it yet. Okay. I want to touch upon a little bit about the land acquisition procedure with the Department of Education. It is a very rigorous process. It is not by any stretch of the imagination a walk in the park. Okay. There was both a phase one and phase two site assessment. There was what's called an environmental site report. Utilities are verified. Zoning is looked at. All of the DEP screenings are done for wetlands and habitats and waterways and stormwater management and so on. Uh, and many other aspects as well. As Dave said, a 17 item checklist. And within that checklist, other items that have to be done. So it does take a while to get done. So there was a lot of due diligence done. And I can say that this is a great opportunity for the district. It is hard to find parcels of land that can pass that rigorous due diligence. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. So I have a process question. Process question. Okay. You're 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 coming before us tonight. Yeah. Um, as the uh, school district of two municipalities, West Windsor and Plainsboro, do you need to do this whole show again with Plainsboro and get their approval in any shape or form? I'm just, I'm just in the West West. I mean, I know it's a West Windsor property, yeah. but it's a, a school district thing yeah. that's over two districts, over yeah, two right. municipalities. But this is the board that has jurisdiction over this property given its location. Yeah. Okay, so it's not like Plainsboro has or has any say in no. any of those type. No, of no, no part of this property. No, I, no, I, I realize that, but I just know it. But the school it, district, everything with the district. Um, remember, we're, we're two county, two municipality, right. two different police departments, two different prosecutors. Everything is depending upon the process. So, because this is a planning board review, um, it's it's a West Windsor process. Okay. Okay. Right. Only and West Windsor only yeah. West Windsor only. Thank you. Here's the the uh, Board of Education. That's that's all members right. of, of the board. From the and and, and from the Windsor, Department so. of Education standpoint, we are we're a West Windsor because that's where the Board of Education office is located. We're a Mercer County school district from the purpose of the DOE. Thank you. You mentioned 28 acres. Why did David Noah report says 25 acres? So why the discrepancy? Which report? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. I think, yeah, it's an yeah, the, the survey also says 25.1. Five acres, and you mentioned that this probably is 28 acres. So we did the correct one. No, it's definitely 28. But I, I just think we have a uh, near key. We have, yeah. I believe it's a few minutes before there is uh, a large plan. And I don't know if that would give. Uh, I'm looking at the info box lower right. <laughs> well, that, that was mentioned on page two of uh, yes, yes. David's so, report. Right. no, I came in. Available online. My assumption is to be confined that information. Mrs. Hibbs, uh, Muriel Hibbs, nine total. So that's where my recollection came from. So. I do, I do understand what you're pointing out, and it's a fair point. We'll have to verify. Okay, we, we'll ver I think there's a minor discrepancy between what's in the the recorded deeds in terms of acreage and the tax, you know, the tax map records. Um, we just saved you um, like three or four hundred thousand. Twenty one. The district proposed enrollments. The numbers are going down. Is that is that is that not the case anymore because that was three years ago? Uh, Mr. Carr, with respect to the current enrollment, we're just around nine thousand. So we have had some slight drops in a decrease. What wasn't predicted at the time was the pandemic. Um, and during that time, um, we did see um, the number of students coming in, especially from our international community, decrease uh, in the in 
kindergarten. So our kindergarten numbers the last four years have decreased both in West Windsor and in Plainsboro. With the increase of full day, we have seen some increase um, with our current kindergarten and enrollment. I, I would say that the the enrollment that you have that we have standing is one part, but we currently have 1,660 units being constructed in live time. We have 4,770 units that have been approved by planning boards in West Windsor um, and another 900, well, including in that number is 900 units that Plainsboro is currently discussing with the Plainsboro Nursery with a prediction of over 1,900 growth students. So even if we're at 9,000, we're going to crest 10,000. Okay, got it. Thank you. Not off the top of my head, Mayor. 0.58. Maybe well, well, it. there's a prediction uh, in our, our numbers of what we could anticipate per type of yield. Um, and you so you get a prediction of 0.52 or 0.53, depending on townhome, apartment, condo, 0.73 for housing stock that has been matured. When housing moves in, new housing over 1, 1.3, 1.13. And that's just at partial percentages of children. When you're hearing the yields, so it's just a demographer's way to talk about percentages per unit. So it's, but on average, one plus for a home. So depending on what happens with future residential developments, um, that this body will play a role in. And I know you can't factor us into that under under the law. It does impact what we need to then think about with respect to how we're gonna um, how we're gonna arrange the facilities. There's something else that comes into play for us, which is capacity of a school is all based on not only not only the number of kids that are coming to it, but how you use the facility, right? So if you have more special needs programs in place for, let's say, multiple disabilities or autism, that also brings OT, PT, speech, and what other services. The DLI program, the dual language immersion program, brings some additional needs in different, different parts of the program. Our growth in our ELL students, our English language learners, also known as your multi-language learners, um, there could be other pullout spaces needed for all that. We're seeing a change, and then full day K has taken rooms that were used for half a day, and now now you need more. So we had four kindergartens at Dutch Neck, now we have eight, right? So you need more, more rooms. So we're tight, some of it self-inflicted because we went to fill a full day K, which I'll own, which because it only took us 50 years as a community to get to full day K, um, but literally 1973 to 2023. Um, but it, it does it uh, it does demand pay attention to um, the needs of our community, not just for now. Like we could we could build on this in four three four years, or if the well we really can't with the planning and bonding. Right, because planning and bonding is three years right there. Um, but, but let's say four or five years to have a school facility on it, or it could be uh, somewhat longer. It's going to be driven by the the growth that comes into our community. Um, and that is a tricky proposition. You know, by the time North opened, they put on an, they were adding an addition to North, right? So it, it's all going to be dependent upon how fast the community numbers bounce back with school age children. What I can tell you with, with that we see is starter homes are usually not here in WWP, right? Families are you know, usually moving in with families. They're not moving in and then having a family. So what's very difficult for us is to predict kindergarten, right? You, it's, it's very, because you track, you track kindergarten based on birth data. So again, you don't see a lot of families coming in and then having three children. They might move in with two and then have another. But when we track based on a geocode birth data, to local hospitals, you would think we're going to have no one in kindergarten in five years, right? Our, a lot of our community moves in. So it's we have to look at trend data. And I have a spreadsheet with about 18 years of, of enrollment at the elementary schools that we predict. And we see, we've seen a historical bump of 18 to 22% in first grade because we had half day K. Now we have to rethink of that because we went to full day K. So it's, it's a fun problem. <laughs> Are those uh, demographic numbers that you are mentioning uh, 
so many kids per housing type. Um, I remember that Stan Katz had developed yeah. it originally for yeah. the school district. Have, have his are those still his numbers, or have you updated them with right. uh, some new uh, model? Yeah. Well, back in 2018, uh, 2017, 2018, we updated and did a new demographic study. We used Dr. Richard Grip um, with statistical forecasting. He's he, he's a professor of demographics, and he also does this work. A former math professor. Um, we sent the report to Stan because, um, and, and, and he, uh, gave us great feedback on the report and the methodologies that were used. So we sort of, he was a legend in the community with respect to being on the board of education. And there's room, there's, there's stories about Stan, like literally greeting every new family to try to figure out the prediction of years gone by, but his numbers <laughs> held for many years. And then some of the, some of the calculations and some of the factors that, it changed after Stan left the board started to change. And, um, but his numbers and his methodology held for a long time. So we, we have updated it. The pandemic has, has sort of blown up everyone's um, demographic uh, predictions. Um, and in districts, it's districts across New Jersey are down collectively. New Jersey's down 80,000 students um, in the last, in the last five years. And which it would just for a big picture with 1.4 million students, that's essentially uh, one, you know, one grade level, 13 grades, right? So. What's the square footage you're contemplating? Square footage of the, the school? Not contemplating at this time, it's premature. But would it ever be used for um, like special needs? It's special every teams? school will be used for special needs. We'll have a responsibility in every facility to ensure that we have a continuum of programs, so yes. And would, would it be an individual only special needs school? No. Well, yeah, and, and I guess so, so as so as you, so George, what George was just reminding me is not contemplated in the models that we had in 2018 was we used to send over 130 students out of district, students that needs we could not meet. Mm -hmm. We now are sending just under 90 students out of district. And it's not that we, about 90. Nine? Nine zero. Nine, Nine zero. Okay. Now, it's not that we have 40 less that are getting high level of services. It's now we're, we've brought more students back because we've built programs. So we have a nonverbal autism population at the K-5 level currently that houses approximately one third of town center. Um, right, And that is a population of students that used to go out of district. We believe that we should be serving the needs of students in district. We just entered into a lease with the option to purchase at 72 Grover's Mill Road, which is the Montessori to the left of High School North across the street from Millstone River. We're in year two of a five-year lease with the right to purchase in year four and year five. And I have every expectation that we're going to make that recommendation. We're now brought our 18 to 22-year-old population to the Montessori, removing them outside of High School North, opening up some space, but building a better program for our multiple disabled 18 to 21 year olds, 22 year olds. The reason I'm saying 21, 22 is the, during the pandemic, the governor and the code allowed one additional year for some students that were impacted by COVID and exceed, exceeded the 21 year age. So we're really working hard to build programs for more students. So yes, special needs students will be factored into this determination. And it's possible that we think of a different population that's out of district because we can build a building thinking about that population in need. So I have every expectation if it's built in my if in my tenure, we would be doing something like that. It's really a two-step process. We're here tonight about the acquisition. Right. We're going through all the owners process of the two. And then once we have it, um, further specifics will be back for this tour uh, with, with further details about this very quickly. Yeah, I presume uh, we'd have to go out for a referendum. So, look, if you, if you assume a school is at least a million dollars a classroom, right? So when you build, and that's taking, I, I factor that into all the common spaces, the right. percentages of gym and cafeteria, main office and nurse. But if you just say, how many rooms do you want to build? You want to build 35 rooms, you should factor 35 to 40 million. 
then you can start going to, do you have to connect to sewer? Do you have to look at sewer capacity? Do you have to look at water and all those kind of things? Now site work is a whole nother dollar you have to add on top. So yes, we the district doesn't have that kind. Of, we would have to go to the taxpayers and then and, and make a plea for why we're making this recommendation. And the taxpayers would have the right to make a decision, do we bond that money? That's another step. And it's it's a size and scope that has not been contemplated yet. What I do know is if we don't buy it, Sam's going to get it for open space or it's going to have 400 apartments on it. So or actually 28 acres, you can do a lot more damage than that. So you know, the district is saying we need to secure land. We know this community and credit to you and credit to the mayor and his team and credit to the community. This is a place people want to live. And while our numbers may have dropped temporarily, there's no doubt this our numbers will rebound. House values haven't dropped anytime soon, aren't, aren't, right? So we're going to see this community explode as residential growth and these units. And Sam's, if if I'm remembering correctly, by spring through next school year, upwards of 1,200 units could be coming at us in opening. By the time we do something we're going to be overcrowded. So we're taking a first step to say, we, we can't even go to referendum on a property unless we have somewhere to build it. So this is a proactive move by the district to say, we know growth is coming and we know we're going to have to think about strategically. We've built out on eight of the 10 schools, Dutch Neck, which is li literally landlocked or you're going to impede on the neighbors and Millstone River are the two schools in my time that we haven't expanded. And I've been superintendent for 11 years, here for 15. And in those 15 years, we've expanded on eight schools. So Millstone, we could do something. We have a field to the right, maybe. We could do a little something, but it's a four or five school with no bathrooms, meaning no classroom bathrooms. And then I have Dutch Neck. Those are the two schools to build out on. And Dutch Neck's landlocked. Anything I do there is going to take out the playground, go into the fields and impede on the neighbors. And I promise you, the minute I do that, I'm going to have to come into code compliance and have to do things with drainage, which is going to impact my parking lots, which is going to push further into the boundaries, right? So you can see we have an issue of what's our next step. So we're taking a very, we've been, and Sam and the mayor know, we've been looking for property for a long time. And this is a beautiful property, which gives us the ability to put boundary around it because there is 28 acres. This is a tree farm, a former tree farm. So it's it has a, a gorgeous um, setting, um, and you'd want you know you'd want to create some kind of visual buffer with the community. At least I would. That's how I would envision it. Um, so it gives us a lot of opportunities here. I'm curious yeah. about your um, you're talking about using this land potentially for an elementary school. Yeah. Um, so what happens to your middle schools and your high schools mm -hmm. in terms of getting all those elementary school students in there yeah. do you have the capacity in those yeah. all those additions that you've made or do right. you anticipate making further additions to those schools fortunately as part of the proactive planning to the growth that we saw coming we've added capacity at both grover community and south um and and so we have the ability to fit five teams at each of those schools uh, a team equals about 100 to 100, currently have four. So we have the ability to add near 400 students to each yet to North. So North has had an addition in the past since once it opened, it added an addition, but it does require us in the future, if we are going to do something, we may have to add a couple of science classrooms at North, but we have the, the seat capacity to go bigger. It's just, we don't have enough science rooms. We have four empty science rooms, not rooms, if you calculate eight periods a day or six periods a day, but eight periods in the schedule across all the science rooms, there's four rooms across all the periods that are open. The rest are used. Our kids love science, as you might have you might have seen. So they take more than one. They take, but we're down to four rooms available at any time in our schedule that have labs. So we would do we'd have to do address that down the down the road. But that might be four to six rooms. That's not going to be. Um, a massive addition to North, but North is our largest property. North is 90 acres. So we have some room. We just have to make some slight configurations, but that's for a different planning board. 
I mean, just to reiterate, uh, we have looked at and we have asked for several sites and we sometimes say yes, no. Originally, the Sanders Farm was on their list of yeah. possible school sites and that prevented us from uh, going through plant preservation. They agreed to take it out of their uh, possible school sites and replace this. So it's a win-win really. We preserve Sanders Farm through uh, state farmland preservation and this site is pretty percent of the cost. <laughs> oh, with respect to um, with respect to bringing a form uh, plans in front and going through DOE approval, it would we couldn't do a thing if we didn't get the bonding. So, talk about close on the property. Oh no, no that's a second. There's a They're they're separate. They're separate separate financial actions. Yeah. So yes, yes. So we would we would buy. We in fact they if they don't build school in thirty years they can sell it back to whomever they want. To. Right. So yeah, we can. Uh, there's plenty. There's many districts that have uh, parcels of land that they own. Um, the expectation would be that this is an earlier than later, most likely move with respect to going to the community. This is pro this is probably in the next three to five years, we'll be going in front of the community for some form of uh, discussion around bonding for the for facility. That being said, we can't even have that conversation unless we have somewhere to build it. And, you, and usually they're separate actions. I mean, there's no concrete plan right now to build. Right. They're just Having the site, so right. we say the site, right? Right, right, right. Like the fans, they get stuck with the property and they have no yeah. tools to build it. Yeah, sell time. Well, they, they can sell time to double the price, sure. Yeah. yeah, as long as it meets the conditional, the, the approved uses, we could technically sell it in the future. Why? Oh, I, I know that. But see, that if, if they decide to sell, it's not going to be next 15, 20 years. They're not, they're just yeah. buying and keeping it in case they need it. Yeah. So yeah. that they don't start looking. Well, it won't exist in 15 to 20 years. It will be something. It's going to be open space or it's going to be a residential unit. <laughs> it's not going to be there for a school. I mean, I, 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 knowing, talking to the professional staff, there are no properties and tracks like this available to put us, to put a school on. Uh, there, we might be able to find something in, in Plainsboro if we got Princeton University to sell us something, but it would be really trying to work, work with a, an owner over there, which is not out of the question yet. And there's other properties that, depending on what happens to SRI, what happens to the former Howard Hughes, uh, any of those kind of tracks come on, we're we're probably looking at looking for another piece of property. We're in, one track is not going to be enough if any of those other things get built out too far. And that's not you do what you need to do, but I'm going to have to protect the I'm going to have to protect the education of the kids and the staff long term and beyond me. Those these decisions may be beyond my time as superintendent, but I need to be thinking of the board of 10 years, 15, 20 years from now. We're really trying to look equally look at this property as we further, you know, limited uh, limited supply in terms of property places. You know, and, and the community has the luxury of a wonderful school system. And, you know, keep that. I think we also just have to acknowledge and credit to the Prine family and the Hibbs family a willingness to think of this, the district and the community and willing to sell to the district versus hold out for affordable housing or something else. They, they see the, the, the value and their family's been, you know, longtime contributors as a former mayor, as their father, and, um, you know, so, you know, real Absolutely. appreciative of them. Absolutely, because uh, selling to uh, the, the Board of Education, you know, the subject to the Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just have a quick zoning related question on C in 15, I'm sorry, 12 is in R1, C in 15 is in 20. So once they get merged into one property, what? Split zones a lot. So the zone line would not change. You would just have a zone line. Zoning requirements uh, 
uh, would, would, would come into play? That's a very interesting question. So uh, I can answer that. Let me just move to that. Part. So, exactly. Yeah. We're in a little bit of an odd zoning condition here. So conditions. Um, very generally in New Jersey, boards only really look at use for schools. So whether standards as well as other concerns regarding transportation, safety, things like that, that's the purview of the Department of Education. So the only real cursory review that a municipality has is whether or not it's permitted or not permitted. This is odd because it's a conditional use. So I consider it permitted, but that's something that the township may want to look at in the future. But as it stands right now, the conditional standards for both districts are the same. So they'd be operating under the same regulations anyway, but really we'd be only looking at the use. The use, the use for both is the same and the conditions are rather than, I don't believe they pose any issue here. Let's, let's um, have your, your, your um, professional go over the map. Um, you know, just give us a summary of what the map is showing. Can you maybe move the board a little closer so the audience can speak? Thank you. Well, yeah, Steve, could you just uh, maybe walk us through or George, well, maybe, um, maybe bring the easel over so it's easier you know, to see. Just, uh, we have our own copy. It's more, okay. more for like, um, well, we need to we need to see what you're pointing at. So we'll uh, we'll verify the acreage. I, I believe there was a discrepancy between what's in the public record and the deeds and the text map. We'll, we'll verify that. But um, subject to that, we'll ask. Uh, tell us a little bit about the plan and the property, just generally. Um, it's my understanding that the board had everyone has a copy of that plan or can see it. Actually, you take the mic off and you know. Yeah, remove the mic. All right. Okay. Can you hear it? All right. Great. Southfield Road. Okay. And this is the parcel presently not shown on here because this is the full is there is a, a a residential parcel right here there is a house on residential properties here right so there's a little bit topography trees with stormwater there's no identified issues with wetland well for a school in terms of how things can be placed it has a nice frontage along southfield which is ideal okay and it's got a nice shape of proportion to allow you know a significant number of recreational fields and open space to maybe be placed towards the back of the site with the school building closer, okay? But again, with this this frontage along Southfield, to take advantage of you know, the separation, vehicle traffic up, and it allows us to make a nice buffer area, as Dr. Arnold referred to earlier, along the perimeter of the site, there are there are uh, woods along the perimeter of the site right now, so it would be nice to leave that large lot of that undisturbed main buffer. Okay, so um, that's really about all there is to say. This is this is obviously north. You can see the north arrow on there. It has a kind of nice orientation as well. The site is very nicely oriented on an east-west axis as well. So uh, it's a great parcel for a school. It's got a nice shape to it too. Well, for school, do we have to have city city sewer water? We have we have a municipal. We have city water and sewer available right out on Southfield. Uh, and we are waiting for will serve letters from the utilities. But we have sanitary, we have sewer, we have gas, we have access to high voltage electricity, we have all those things available to us on Southfield. Okay. Okay. Have you talked to any of the, um, you know, any of the residents around the property, around the perimeter of the property? Has there been any outreach to the residents, you know, around the perimeter of the property? I don't, I don't, I don't believe so. No, no outreach to the neighbors as we're negotiating for the acquisition plan. Yeah. So we, we work with the employees to come out and pursue. Thank you. 
Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? David, you want to just give us a quick go overview? Specifically, NJSA 40 prior to taking action necessitating the expenditure of any public funds shall refer the action to the planning board for review and recommendation. And that applies to school boards. Uh, NJSA 40 colon 55D-31B, the very next section, provides a little bit more specificity for what this is. And essentially the planning board needs to be warned by and is consistent with the master plan. And it specifically says at least the land use plan and a housing plan. So we looked at the land use plan, the housing element and fair share plan, the community facilities plan, as well as the open space and recreation plan, farmland preservation plan, and historic preservation plan. Um, I won't touch on all of those. I just want to really briefly touch on the 2020 land use plan first. It was already discussed. Uh, that plan places both of these properties within the low density and medium density land use categories. Those both correspond to zoning districts, which permit schools, is that a Hawaiian thing? Uh, permit schools as a conditional use. And there's no recommend, uh, no recommended change to that. Um, there's also two goals that are fairly relevant. Goal A is to achieve a desirable balance of non-residential, residential, open space, recreational, cultural, civic, and agricultural uses. And goal E, which is to encourage, uh, or sorry, to support opportunities for non-residential developments in appropriate locations. So based on that language, based on the land use classification of the site, I believe that this would be consistent with the land use plan element Regarding our 2019 housing element and fair share plan, that's a very easy one. This site was not identified as a component to address our affordable housing obligation. That's very important. Therefore, it's consistent with our housing plan. Uh, I also believe it's consistent with our 2022 community facilities plan. Uh, that plan had estimated based on that, the, the, the multipliers that were provided from that 2018 study that there'd be approximately 1,120 additional public school kids added to the district over the next several years, understanding that that projection might need to get looked at in the future again. So while this site is not specifically identified in that community facilities plan, the plan does recommend that the township and the board of education continue to monitor guidelines of what acreages are appropriate. Uh, for a elementary school, it was around 15 to 25 acres. And for a middle school, it was at least 30 acres. This is right next to the cusp for middle school as well for size. So again, I think that this is consistent with our 2022, I'm sorry, our, uh, yes, our 2022 open space, sorry, community facilities plan. Uh, if there's any questions. David, you know the charts on page three of, of your um, <clears throat> report, it says R1 slash C bulk standards. And then and then the table three says- Oh, that should be R20 bulk standards, yeah, yes. Right, yeah. okay. But again, those bulk standards really would not apply to any type of school construction. So this is just informational about what those districts typically require, but you know, uh, a school would not be subject to a lot width or front yard requirements, lot area, simply just looking at the use. Any other questions for Dave? Okay. Easy tonight, thank you. Um, no, I, I just want to think that I mean, they have been working with us for almost six years since we have became uh, mayor and we looked at in both sides, nothing worked out uh, because of various different problems. And this is really win win. I mean, they gave up on Sanders Farm, we gave up Sanders Farm, and this property, Sam and I, we are wondering about this as well. Uh, so uh, we thought on, on, on and off with the wanted to buy it, so they're buying it better than we buy it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, um, I can, right now I'd like to open up to the public. If you want to comment or ask the afternoon any questions, please step up to the microphone, take your name and address for the record. And on um, just this application, anybody? Anybody want to say something? Okay. No one? Nobody. I don't see anybody running up to the microphone. Okay. Um, I just have a, a quick, a quick uh, process question. So sure. should this board find this plan to be consistent with our master plan? I'm assuming that something would be submitted to the Department of Education 
Uh, is that typically the process with this? Well, I've, I've seen um, I've seen boards handle courtesy review applications differently. Sometimes some boards have adopted a resolution. Other times, uh, boards will do a letter. It, it, I've seen I've seen them handled differently. Um, I think. Typically in the past, the board's never adopted a resolution, even with um, building additions. It's usually just a letter that the board attorney writes um, in, uh, for the board chair, and we'll send it over to um, Dr. Adderhold's office. That would be great. Yeah. This is your long range facility plan for us, a new college. Have you looked at other pieces of uh, facilities throughout the town for any long range plan? You say Dutch Bank is in full capacity. Um, community, I, I'm thinking because you're transportational. When you say you're moving your home, um, well, no, no, if you're a Montessori school, so, so you're looking for alternative mm. facilities, right? We're always looking for other facilities. And with respect to the long range facilities plan in front of you, it's not just this property. That's the minor amendment, right? So it's because we're of the of the acquisition that we're here. Right. You not look at There's no in our other facilities are all being earmarked as is. I know when the transportation office in the middle of that was put there as a that's no, it, it it wasn't. It, it was it's yeah, transportation yeah. offices. It's transportation offices. Our office staff is there. No, it's being used as office space. Our building yeah. and grounds department is there. Our technology department there. We can have a different conversation with you as a neighbor if you'd like. But you know that I haven't heard anything from anyone since 2015. So I'm here with respect to 321 and 323, not here with respect to 505 Village Road East, which is seems to be what your question is as a back end. I think the question is the fact that Dutch Neck School is full capacity also. Dutch Neck School is at full capacity because the way we're using Dutch Neck School. Right. It's also at full capacity because the planning board and the township has approved residential developments that send to Dutch Neck. And they're only going to get more crowded when the property out on Old Trenton Road opens. That's next school. That's yeah, because that's where that property will send the 190 plus units that were approved. So, so I think maybe this is a conversation for another time. It seems very pointed. The conversation you're trying to have as a neighbor through the planning board, but you haven't had the courtesy to speak to me about. It. Well, I, 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 I think we need to stay on. I think we need to stay on topic and application. Right, we're, we're here. About, I was answering a question from one of your. No, members. I, I, I understand. My only concern was: have they considered other facility improvements? I know they approached this. But I, I'm just I, asking. I, I'd love nothing more. That, but then you're, you're. I don't want to. Well, keep that in mind when we come back for a property expansion in the future. No, they, they, they are required by state to do a. Uh, facilities plan, and they will. They, it won't come to us. That's not your question. State. Yeah, that's why I was asking him. Is this the only facility he's looking at at this point? Right. This is only okay. to add it to the. That wasn't your yeah. question, and you know it. Okay. We're here tonight about the um, potential acquisition of, of these uh, properties. Yeah, we're, we're, we're back on we're was... back on topic and application. I've been okay. here too long. I know. I know what the question was. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there somebody from the public that wants to say something? I see you standing yes, back I'm there. Okay. I'll give you another moment to step up to the microphone. Correct. My comments are related to Southfield. Uh, my name is Kristen Epstein. I live at 11 Madison Drive, which uh, my backyard fence shares boundary with this property. So I am immediately um, affected by this project. This, this is only a courtesy of people. I'm... Only yes. courtesy review, but we've sworn people in, so I'm going to swear you in. If you to swear we've me. sworn people in, I'm going to swear you in. If you could raise your right hand, oh sure, do you swear or affirm that testimony you're about to give is, will be the truth? Yes. So sworn or affirm. Please state okay. your full, again. Please state so your full wanna, I, I did want to state on the record I am not opposed to the school. Uh, and um, if you could say this property, if you could say. 
I'm sorry, Epstein, EP, as opposed to the school purchasing this property um, of the options available. Ryan family has a right to sell it to whomever they like, and, and they are allowed to use it for what, you know, this is, this is a fine use of the property. I just wanted at this point, since before the planning starts of building any buildings on the property, just to consider a few things. One thing, there is a stub road that comes off of West Kincaid Road that goes uh, to the, uh, is not north, I guess it's the south part of the Kincaid, property yeah. there. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to point out that we, as uh, a small residential neighborhood, would prefer that those roads not be continued and continued by anything connected because it will become a tough road. Um, people already driving on the road thinking when I put them on the tough road, so I would appreciate that courtesy. Okay. Um, the other thing is any entrances off of Bennington. Again, people already use Bennington as a tough road, so. And there's a particular thing that's worth on this property. I believe that's what this outline is showing, but there's no legend showing that outline. There's the um the home from the early 1800s there. That's thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, everybody else. I'll entertain a motion. Motion added. Second by Alan. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, folks, turn to close. Okay, um, any discussion amongst the board members? No, but I, I think Kristen, because I, I drove around the area earlier today. I, I know, I think I know what you're saying. So I guess basically one way in and out in along Southfield Road would be the design because you don't want people coming off going through the neighborhoods behind there and traffic, you know. Do I recall that I don't want that road to continue? So these are all things that are going to definitely come up during construction and the site plan review. Yep. Right, just just to show, we appreciate the comments, but just to, we're here just strictly on the acquisition yeah. of the property and I the plans in terms of access and what's going to be on the site. That that will be a, a further conversation. We'll be back. Yeah, it's all going to get lost in the next three to five, ten, fifteen years whenever you decide to build. You know, and those are things that will definitely address them. Um, anybody else? I'll entertain a motion to approve PB 23-08 that it um, complies with the elements of the master plan. So moved. Moved by Erica. Second by Anis. Okay, uh, please pull the roll. Um, oh, Curtis, you have No, 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 we're good, we're good. Mr. Schichtel? Yes. Mr. Pankov? Yes. Mr. Begg? Yes. Ms. Bari? Yes. Ms. Applegate? Yes. Councilwoman Jeevers? Yes. Mayor Marate? Yes. Vice Chairman Hoberman? Yes. Chairman Carp? Yes. Motion to pass. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Thank you, I had to pull out that then remembered that you're not an alternate anymore. <laughs> That's what caused me to pause. <laughs> No, Rob, Rob, and, and <laughs> Funka. Yeah. <laughs> 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 